welcome to the Beyond Cinema Studio up here at TIFF. Simon, Logan, Zeke. Uh, firstly, just congratulations on you, you guys' journey. I mean, last time we saw you, a bunch of short films, you're doing stuff for Good Magazine, there was a whole bunch of stuff going on, but having, you know, realised a feature film and bringing it and having the premiere here at TIFF last night, how do you feel the day after? A little hangover or are we feeling good? A little tired, a little yeah. surreal. What was it like, though, rele releasing, releasing it to, to that sort of an audience? It was exciting. We were, Zeke and I weren't actually sitting in the theater, but we were kind of bouncing in and out to sort of like hear responses. Uh, and it was really fun when you'd go in and hear people sort of like gasp or like you'd hear a lot of laughter for certain scenes. And it was really strange just to hear that for the first time. Yeah. Like, and how good are you at like um, watching yourself on screen and having that experience? Well, I'm, I always look at him as a different person. So, and mainly I think it's good to watch mechanics, what you're doing, how you could have stayed in the frame better. But I, I, I really enjoyed it. I, I think it's, these guys made me look like I have my best work. So I, I enjoyed the hell out of it. That's cool. But it's a really fun film. I mean, the whole entire way. I mean, you lose yourself, especially when everyone's doing what they're doing. and how, All the actors, everyone was so brilliant that it kept you on the edge of your seat the entire time. Like, I, my heart was pounding. And you know, that's, you know, everybody says that stuff, but this one's really, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Um, but is it also different when you're getting to work alongside like peers, you know, like yep. Mackenzie and Jeremy and that sort of thing where it's like you can all kind of bounce off each other and feed each other and there's no necessarily no hierarchy coming into it. It's just a group of actors. Yeah, I, we, all, we all walked into it as this is a story of all of us coming of age and it, it's, and they did it, Zeke and Simon did such an amazing job of making all these characters. You, you feel for each one, you know, um, and you know, they're lovely. You know, Jeremy Allen White's an amazing, brilliant actor. He reminds me a lot of Dustin Hoffman or McKenzie. She's she's unbelievable. Always giving, always, always, always. You you just want to watch. You want to be a part of it when you're working with her. That's cool. And for you guys, I mean, assembling this team of people, and um, and obviously Mark Pellegrino is getting a little bit of attention for doing something different here. But you know, what was it about these guys in particular? Like, what did you see in Logan in that you wanted him to be in this with you? I think for um, for casting BJ, we saw a lot of people, and I th and what we were looking. I think the thing that Logan offered that no one else offered was a pretty extreme duality of like, you look at Logan. This is someone who could hurt you, who's a little bit dangerous, that makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable in the room, but also someone that breaks my heart that I fall in love with, and That's I think. Yeah, it's just like he's someone when he goes through something hard, you just root for him and you love him, even though he's not necessarily making the best decisions. And I think that was a duality that was really unique and something that we didn't see in anybody else. Um, with uh, with each person, though, really, they walked into the room. We had like an audition process, and we pretty much knew immediately, which was really nice. So why couldn't this film be shot in Darien, Connecticut? <laughs> We needed windmills. There's no windmills. Well, this, the whole movie. This is actually uh, the whole movie was built around one of our producers, Justin Dupree, is from South Texas. And he's from the community where we shot. So the movie was really built around what we had access to with him, like the farms, the cotton gin, um, Corpus Christi. Like so, like that was the first thing, pretty much that before anything else, yeah. before there was even an idea for a story, was the location. Okay. Yeah. So it was really built around that and what we could do for, on, a, on a on a you know for a smaller film and. Uh, but, I mean, we would love to shoot in Darien, Connecticut, too, someday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, they're both two sides of a completely different America, in a sense, right? I mean, this is, like, rural America. This is, you know, Americana. And, you know, is there, was there kind of a, an attempt to honor all those things and build upon those layers here? Like, was that very much a conscious... I mean, thing? I think what, what we could bring was we had... Anytime we needed to understand how things worked or, or so we weren't doing anything that was incorrect to the environment, we could always talk to Justin, but we could also bring a really fresh eye in terms of our perspective is like we don't haven't spent that much time in Texas and so our perspective is so much just of awe, you know? And, and I think what the, the perspective of the audience would probably be for the most part because most people are not going to be from that area. Yeah. Um, but in terms of comparing it to like being different, I mean, I think honestly like we could fall in love with any environment, you know, except for LA maybe, which I'm a little bit tired of seeing in movies and I don't really like shooting in LA that much. Um, besides LA, I think we can fall in love with anywhere. Like we'd love to make a movie in Connecticut and New York City and, you know, Eastern Europe. Like, I mean, I'd love to go, you know, 
shoot in Russia. Who knows? You know, like I think it's so exciting when you're somewhere new and you're sort of figuring it out as you go. And it's not like, and I think it would be inter uh, shooting in Connecticut would be interesting in a different capacity because we already have such strong emotional attachments to things. You know, but yeah, who knows? Um, is Dutch Southern a real guy? He is a writer who writes under multiple aliases. Um, he is highly enigmatic. He, you know, comes and goes and disappears. And but he is a real person, yes. I wasn't sure if you guys created like an editor version of the, like the <laughs> Coen Brothers out there, yeah. editor guy. I thought maybe you guys teamed up on this. And we thought about doing that for the editing credit, but but then we just left Simon's name. <laughs> um, so do, do places like this really exist anymore? Like. Corpus Christi in the in the in the movie. It's, I, I'm. I mean, I, I come from like a rural place like Indiana, and I think I think places like that absolutely exist. I mean, we used to go party in cornfields. You know, there was nothing else about it. Do the coolest thing about it. And I remember when I got there, and I, I told Zeke and Simon, this place is wild because, it's, it's like, uh, it's like even a place this rural. It can't hide from progress, and that's the backdrop of all these giant windmills. It's a collide. That's what's so cool about this whole and the image of this place. This it's almost magical because it has this ancient American feel, this Wild West, coupled with these brand new windmills that just are completely out of place. But progress, it can't hide from progress. And what about you? Your progress, like coming from that background, coming from Indiana. Yeah. Um, what made you step out into something that's such a creative field? And, and did your parents give you the license to do that? Or yeah, did you have to I, I was lucky. I mean, I, was, I didn't learn how to read until the ninth grade, so it was either this or the Marines. And when I was, I think, 15, I met an acting teacher who sent me to Chicago, and I started studying Meisner Method there, and I lived with the family, and then moved to New York after that. And that was the real, you know, jarring part. But I, you know, I think when you're young, you're stupid and you're ambitious. And, and the, the, I don't know how I did it, but I somehow managed to survive to 23. It's fun to imagine Logan in the Marines. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Bizarro Logan. <laughs> yeah, these guys are not exactly um, the team of youngsters in this film, not exactly um, heavily disciplined until, until things kind of go wrong. Um, for you guys, you know, it, from a story perspective, um, was that was that an attractive element that there was this kind of just danger at at kind of every turn? Yeah, I mean, I think the things that probably really jumped to this first was just there's a real powerful rhythm to the dialogue that Dutch Southern writes, um, and it's unique and weird, and, and and I think that was really exciting. And I think the other thing that was exciting was that there were a bunch of really meaty characters. There wasn't it wasn't a single protagonist, single coming of age story. It was like there's a bunch of meaty characters playing off each other. And it was just exciting to jump into that and, and see how that would all how, how it all work, you know? Yeah. And in terms of you guys working together, like what's what's the uh, what's the you know the the, the dynamic working dynamics? Yeah. I don't we we tried doing different things at certain times, but then there's really just like a natural ebb and flow I mean, to everything. We've we been do. we've been making stuff together since we were teenagers and so it's all pretty it's all pretty organic. It's like it's what we know so it makes sense to us and then I don't know if it makes sense to like anybody when, else. When we were younger, when you like it's only us working on something, like one of us would do one thing and one would do the other, but now it's just sort of we talk about everything. Like, now that we can hire people. It's yeah. <laughs> now that there's people around us. Yeah. And like also just going to different universities and trying mm -hmm. that different education process that and then recircling and making your own shorts and then recircling back together. Was it always gonna be that was there always going to be this chance that you created for yourselves to work together, or did you really try and kind of go separate ways? I can answer one, one part of that. I think we made stuff together when we were young because we had to, and uh, you know, because there was no one else. And I think that there was always that part of me that was a little bit scared that thought maybe I couldn't do this on my own. And I think that that sometimes sat in me in a weird way, like and, and uh, going to my own film school and making stuff where I, I did it on my own. It was then having the confidence to know I can do this on my own is what then made me know, actually, I'd just rather be with my brother and doing this with my brother. And it wasn't a decision out of fear. It was a decision out of this is actually what I want, you know? And that was important for me. That's when, like, you're at your best is, like, when you're not relying on the other person too much. You both feel good and you're both confident and you're both saying what you want to say. And then that just, we know how to mesh that together really well. And so next film is a project about the Boston Red Sox? <laughs> Yankees for life. Against against the boss. Yeah, yeah, maybe against the boss. It's like cool. <laughs> All right, thanks for coming in. All right. <laughs>